I'll be real with you. It would have been quite funny if Real Madrid had lost. If they had taken two L's, we would have had a very different seal because I was ready just to go in and completely dissect flipping Real Madrid brick and pretty much call um, those guys that they call Barcelona, Barcelona, Bartomeu. But look, man, it's what champions are, are there for. People will say it's it's witchcraft. People say it's white magic. It's juju. I thought these guys had lost. I thought these guys held an L. Maybe you don't take off flipping Marcos Gavi to, to Ram, but fact of the matter is this. Somehow, Real Madrid have a life, and they still only have one point. It's only one point at the end of two games, but at the end of the day, they're still there, and people need to put some respect on Casemiro's name. And all I'm saying is this. When Hazard came on, the game changed. That's all I'm saying. Let's ride. Let's be clear here. Here, so that we're not confused. Real Madrid are not winning the Champions League. These guys are not coming anywhere close. So this isn't a case of like, oh, it's a slow build. They need to grow through. No, these guys are one hundred percent not winning this CL. It's it's not happening. Um, the team lacks spark. They like the kind of imag imagination. And then you say to yourself, okay, wait, wait a minute. How come they looked so good? They beat Barcelona 3-1 and they look like this? Because it's very simple. Munch and Gladbach know how to defend. Munch and Gladbach don't have, um, dim, um, don't have dumb and dumber in center defense, i.e. PQE and Langlet. They actually are well managed. They're actually well coached. And they're actually a team. Barcelona are not a team. We'll get into that with the whole Bartomeu news. They're not a team. So Real Madrid are like, oh, we have so much space against Barcelona, bigger pitch, flipping geriatric busquets, as, as flipping DM, as flipping loser um, and pace. You have like people who are completely and totally washed. But against Munching Gladbach, okay, maybe it's not busquets, maybe it's not Longlets and, and so forth. But they're a team that actually knew what the threat that Real Madrid had and restricted them. So Vinicius didn't have the space he, he, he normally has. Asensio did his thing, but Asensio... Struggling trying to get back into fitness, but he was held down. And look, man, guys, he may not yet reach the heights of Lillian because Lillian Suram is, was one of the greatest defenders of all time. But his offspring, his seed, his seed is doing some things. I think this is like his second or his first champ league start. Two Gs. The first was a, was say, a quality G, an amazing G. And I think what you see from him is he's 23 years old, still very young, a great eye for a goal. Great eye for a goal. And I think... Once that, before changes were made, before they brought off Suram as like Munching Black Buck, they are, they are winning this because I didn't know where the Real Madrid goal was, what was going to come from. And Munching Black just looked to have taken the game to them. And it's one of those things where I get it. I understand. I understand why Homeboy um, wanted to um, take off Suram be much more defensive and conservative and, and and hold on. And they arguably could have sort of held on, but it's like, you see, this is the, okay, you have, we have to be real here now. So Hazard comes on, Modric comes on, and I think they both helped to change the game. I think with Hazard, he protected the ball a lot more than Vinicius. I think Vinicius was ineffective because much much that back who were marking very well, not giving him any space. Now Hazard, obviously, it didn't do anything crazy, but because of how he was using the ball, well, keeping a hold of the ball and just keeping Real Madrid in good attacking possession, it was key. Modric was huge. And as much as I said that Modric, his peak is gone, quality is quality. So even if he doesn't have the legs that he had when he was 25, 26, 27, because he still has that skill which you never lose, you never lose the skill, you never lose your mentality, look at how he came on and helped to change the game because it was his perfectly pitched cross over to Ramos, that Ramos headed down to Casemiro. And look, Casemiro is that dude. He has not really... I think this has probably been one of Casemiro's worst seasons. And you can see that he is declining, just like most of this team, which they they, 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 they do need to be sort of re revamped. But that's what great teams do. That's what team players that have great character do. They're like, okay, I get it. I'm not the dude I used to be, but, but 
we, forget that. We need to come clutch now. We need to say what's up now. We need to live now. We need to write now. And that's what he did. He said, what's up? Homeboy said, what's up? Because that header down to Benzema was huge. Great finish by Benzema. That was a great finish by Benzema, but it was Casemiro getting there. Last ditch, ensuring that he headed the ball down before the whole ball went over. That was huge. And again, he was there, right place, right time, for Ramos to, to, to head down, and, and, and boom, he put it in there. But let's be real. So, Munching Gladbach have two points, I believe. I think they drew... Yeah, they, they've got, so much of have two points. I'll get to Instagram because well, because I'm going to send out a link for everybody to join in. So I'm, I'll, 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 I'll send out a link because we, we need some things to, to discuss, but I want to just get this out there. So Insta are on two points. Monte Gladbach on two points. Shakhtar on four points, I believe. And Real Madrid, they're on one point. And they now have a double header against Insta. And so this was just a life thing because if Real Madrid ended up with zero points, which we were very close to, it would be like, bro, especially going into the Inter game, they're useless. But I, you see, I said this before, like things have so changed, especially for the Spanish teams, because for most of this past decade, it's been Real Barcelona, Real Barcelona, Real Barcelona. And my thing here is this, 100%, of course, Cristiano is a big miss. But... It's Cristiano and the whole team. It's a team thing. It's a team problem. It's a team issue. Because I had this piece of crap loser on Twitter, which because I Twitter has a lot of these flipping sad morons who have no life. So this low life, no life moron was like, hey, HH, you see, without Cristiano, what can they do? I was like, you piece of crap. Get a life. Go outside. Meet someone. And don't dedicate your life to somebody who doesn't give a crap about you. Like, you, Christina fanboys, I am begging you, get a life. You're sad. You live sad lives obsessing over a dude who doesn't give a damn about you. Please get a freaking life. So, yes, of course, like, this real team, Rodrigo is trash. Let's just, let's just keep it real. Rodrigo is trash. He's garbage. Vasquez is from the road. And Real Madrid, I didn't tell you to sell Hakimi. You went to go and you went to sell Hakimi. Why, why, why did you sell Hakimi? Who told you to sell Reguillon? Who told you about that? Because Reguillon is a left back, but I'm, I'm sure he can also debutize for a right back as well. And look at how good Reguillon is doing for Tottenham. Um, but see, the big thing is the Hazard thing. That was a major thing because Hazard was supposed to be that big prime guy to come and give Real their the creativity because they're missing that creativity. Because it's about matchups. Against Barcelona, they'll give you space. So you give this Real Madrid team space, they'll be able to execute specifically with guys like Vinicius and using his, his, his speed and the intelligence of Benzema. But if you don't have guys that will give you space, Vinicius is ineffective. Vinicius is a talented dude. He's talented. But the guy needs a football brain and the guy does not have a football brain. He walks purely off instinct. He does not think a lot about what he's trying to do. As opposed to like an Ansifati who gives a lot more thought to what he wants to, to do. Vinicius simply doesn't. So, that's, so this kind of game, you needed a hazard. You needed a thinker and a guy to try to unlock and create. Vinicius is just like, give me the ball, go attack. You need something to say, okay, let's just calm down, go through, keep the ball, try and find some little nice pockets and find some intelligence combinations to try and break a far better drilled, far more organized um Munching Glad Gladback team. So, but I'll be real with you. I don't know how these dudes. I'll be guys, I'll be real with you. Because when we did our preview, when we did our preview, I said, don't ignore Munching Gladback. People say, oh, so much. I said, because no, no, remember, I said, Shaq to Tonet, mm, away from home. It's always tricky. Now, I didn't know they would beat them real at the Santiago Bernabeu. I said, Munchen Gladbach, don't sleep on them. <laughs> because these guys can cause real and inter issues. And I told you, we'll get to Inter Milan. We will, we're going to discuss Inter Milan. Because those guys are the biggest choke jobs in Europe. And I think Conte, you know what? Conte, you're a choke job. Because if Inter don't make it to this group and they end up in the Europa League again, these guys are complete losers. And for Real Madrid, let's keep it real. 
maybe you can do what soft in, in, La, in La Liga. I don't know how they make it out of this group. Because see, if they had lost this game, oh my God. But you see, going into those two inter games, see, like those two inter games, oh my God. I genuinely have no idea who's going to win because Real have to win, Inter have to win. Because the idea was they both go into that game both with six points. So then they're like, okay, you know, maybe we can take it right here. But now they're going into those games where Shakhtar and Munching Dabak are like sort of now saying what's up because because obviously Munching and Inter are on the same points. So going into that game, looking at this Real Madrid team, I don't see it. I don't see it. So the only thing that can help them, the only thing that can help this Real Madrid team is if somehow, some way, Zad comes through. They need Zad. Without Zad, this team doesn't have that X factor to go through. Because unless you're an extremely well built team, or you need that that X factor, Bayern Munich, they're just an extremely well built team and they're a flipping machine. Hence why they did what they did. So either you're, you're like a machine, like a Bayern Munich, or you have to have an, an X factor. Benzema is good. He's a quality player. He's not an X factor. He's not like you know what, big time, big game. I'm gonna win this game for you. I'm gonna. I'm here to be a game changer for you. So and I just don't know whether we'll see that. See, it was good seeing. I saw glimpses. I saw glimpses of Hazard because look, this is his first game in what six, seven months, and you just saw glimpses of what he can do. Real Madrid, they need creativity. I don't know what's going on with Isco because I've always said that. Try a 4-2-3-1. Try a 4-2-3-1. Put Isco in and the no, 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 number 10. You don't need to slav, um, slavishly go with a 4 3 Because obviously, if this 4 3 is not giving you creativity, change to a 4-2-3-1. Put Isco in the number 10 because Isco is an ex, has an extremely high footballing IQ. And Isco has no place in a 4-3-3. But Zidane is stubborn. He'll stick to his 4-3-3. And in a 4-3-3, Isco simply has no, 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 no space. So there's no point in, in Isco even being in the club. As long as Zidane is there because he cannot fit into a 4-3-3. But this team needs creativity. They need it because, you see, it's all about matchups. Against against teams like a Barcelona or a Sevilla or a Liverpool, Real Madrid can say what's up. Even against Man City, Real can say what's up and they should have done a lot better than they did against City last season. But against teams that are much more defensive, much more tactical, which is why I... Don't, I'm not sure Real Madrid can beat Inter Milan. Because I see those games could probably be draws because I don't know how Real Madrid, this Real Madrid team, can beat a defensive team. Because the thing which Inter Milan is like, they're not in strategy in, in it. Okay. Have they scored a goal? Okay, I think they've like scored like one goal in two games or something. So that's my thing. And look, Real, they're still alive. And I think thing for Munch and Gladbach, very un- unlucky. I get what the coach wanted to do. But if Marcos Turam had stayed on the pitch, they win the game. For sure, because Marcos Turam would have scored another goal. Because they had two, three amazing counters. Superb counters. And then and just messed it up. So if you had given those counters and Marcos Turam was on those counters, you probably have Munching Gladbach winning the game. But the thing about it is that as disappointed as Munching Gladbach are, because this would have been a huge win for them, they will know that, hey, man, we can beat the, we can beat these guys at the Bernabeu. So as long as we have Marcus Turner, we can beat these guys. Um, and they will feel confidence going up against Inter Milan again and Shakhtar Donetsk. So this, we see, this group has just become extremely open and very exciting, which means that anything, anything can, can go down in this flipping group, man.